All right, so we're going to try something different. We're going to talk about Protect the McCree, which is a composition, triple support, Winston Diva, McCree, uh, Reinhardt Zarya sometimes, but I don't prefer Reinhardt Zarya. And uh, we're going to talk about how to play this composition. Now, Protect the McCree is what I call it. Um, I always think of the Brigida, the Zenyatta, the Lucio, controlling, escorting, moving the McCree around the map. Um, and, you know, you could call it triple support McCree, you could call it uh, McCree dive, I guess. I've heard smash and flash is something that apparently somebody was calling it recently. So it doesn't really matter what you call it. Ultimately, the execution of the composition is the same. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and do a quick write-up of this. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be explaining how to play this composition fundamentally. Um, how to play it up against different compositions, because that's something I, I think is incredibly lacking in a lot of guide videos. <coughs> and the individual roles of each person in the composition. Now, my good friend Temporal did an excellent uh, introduction into this composition, so I would give that a check out. I'll probably link that in the description before you watch this one, because we're going to take the information that he gives there, and we're going to go in more detail and specifically how to play up against different compositions. Um, and so with the Protect the McCree, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and draw a little scale here. So this is something I uh, I did with my team when explaining Protect the McCree. There's two different skills to the Protect the McCree in determining how you're supposed to play it. Okay, and the fr on on different ends of our first skill is the word poke, and then the word play. Okay. Now what that means is protect the McCree, whenever you have a Zenyatta and a McCree, you've got a pretty good amount of damage at range, right? So you might want to play, sometimes when you're playing the protect the McCree, you might want to play for putting out as much damage at range as possible without getting up and close and dirty, getting your hands dirty, right? So that would be considered playing for poke, naturally, right? But the play aspect of protect the McCree, an aspect of protect the McCree that you can use is forcing a brawl and then utilizing your shield bash, your flashbang, your discord, and your fan the hammer to execute a target, usually a tank. So in the poke, it's about range. In the play, I call it play because that's like the like like think of it like a, a an, an, an NFL play. This is what we you go here, I go there, we execute this, right? You don't just sit there and wait for an opportunity. You have to be decisive in scheduling it, right? But that's not the only skill with Protect the McCree. The other end of the skill that we're going to draw here is how we execute. Once we decide whether we're playing for poke or whether we're playing for play, are we executing damage? Is that our goal? Soften. I'll explain that in a second. Or are we focusing on the point? So these have a direct correlation. And in, really in most aspects are basically the same thing. These aren't really two different skills. It's two, just two different ways of saying the exact same thing. So when I say I'm playing for poke, I'm playing for damage. I'm putting out as much damage to the enemy team as possible so that A, they are going to die, right, fundamentally. B, I build up more ult charge than they do. Or C, when they do attack us, whether that's through a dive or through a uh, brawl, whatever it is, that they have less HP or are missing cooldowns that we force. So let's say we're playing up against an Ana composition with tanks and, and our, we're poking, we're poking, we're poking, our McCree is damaging, is Zenyatta, damage, damage, damage. And then the tanks get to on top of us. But by the tanks got on top of us, they're maybe missing HP, which puts us at a better advantage. Maybe they're, maybe the Ana doesn't have grenade anymore, right? Which puts us at an advantage. Uh, maybe the Diva had to use all of her matrix just to get her team on top of us because her damage is so threatening. So either one of those would be softening up their ability to kill us, right? Be whether it's directly through damage or whether it be absorbing of cooldowns. So either way, this revolves around the poke side of the scale. The other side, like we said, is the execution of the play using our Discord, our Fan the Hammer, our Shield Bash, our Flashbang, all of those things together to quickly execute a target, right? And the circumstances in which you execute this play specifically are when you're forcing point pressure. So when you do not want to poke, you need to force the play by 
forcing point pressure. So in other words, you either on attack, get onto the objective, push the payload as far as you can, but avoiding as much poke, avoiding d eating as much damage as possible. Or on defense, you hide or seek cover until the enemy team pushes objective pressure. Then you decisively, quickly execute your play on the point. Now, without context, this doesn't really make any sense. Like, okay, when do you do which? I don't really under fully understand this, but we have to understand this baseline first because there is gonna be something that we're gonna be running into here. If we add little tick marks here, depending on what composition you're playing up against and often what map you're playing up against, this depends on which edge of the spectrum you might be playing. For example, if we were to say, we're playing a protect the McCree composition into goats, right? Do you think that I want to force point pressure and brawl, uh, force my quick burst combo onto a goat's composition? Well, not really, they'll steamroll us, right? So in that, I would want to be almost all the way to the edge on this spectrum. This is how I'd play against pokes. So you'd want to poke and do as much damage as possible before they get to you. So even though they may be better at brawl, they're down a lot of HP, they're down a lot of resources. Whereas if we push said something like double sniper, right? Double sniper, obviously has better poke damage than we do. They have the Hanzo, they have the Widow, maybe they have an Ash or Mercy's and Yada damage boost, who knows. But ultimately, if we can hide and avoid their sight lines as much as possible and then execute anybody that tries to stop the payload moving, or maybe we're on the payload and the second they try and push the payload or cap the objective, then we execute their play very quickly all while trying to avoid poke, then obviously that would be what we wanna do. And that would mean that against double snipers, protect the McCree functions on this side of the spectrum. So you can kind of see how depending on what composition you're going into changes how you play the composition. Now, for all you up and coming coaches, all you up and coming tier two, tier three players, tier one players, that understanding that your job in the composition, your job as a team changes depending on what you're fighting is probably one of the most important pieces of advice that you'll ever hear and something that took me a long time to learn but once i did learn it is was incredibly valuable your job changes so let's go more to the combo side of things i'm not going to go super in detail on this because i think temporal already does a better job of this again i'll link his video in the description let's talk about the play first and then we'll talk about the poke the play is effectively using your shield bash my handwriting is awful. I don't have a special writing tablet, but I think you guys will get the idea regardless. Your flashbang, your fan. I actually forgot something in this aspect before. Your discord, and we're gonna add the fourth one. And one of the most important aspects of it. Five, speed, okay? Because remember, this is being played with Lucio. Jeez, those E's are great. So the play is basically to speed onto a tank, usually. Anybody that's contesting point, contesting the objective, um, and assassinate it, right? Uh, even after the shield bash nerf, you with speed can shield past the Reinhardt and stun him. You can speed into the Arissa and stun her. Uh, you can speed, obviously go through a Winston bubble and kill the Winston. And this goes for D.Va, this goes for Roadhog, this goes for... Um, uh, Zarya, once she doesn't have personal bubble. This goes for really any target. Um, doesn't have to be a tank. And even with the shield bash change, it's still relatively easy to get a stun onto a target, especially if uh, the Reinhardt is going, hey, if I don't turn around to block this shield bash from the Brigida that just sped behind me, then I'm going to get shield bashed. But then the McCree is going to flash, and uh, it, it's a lose lose situation. He can't possibly block both the shield bash and a flashbang. And at, now that the, after the McCree changes, we only really need one CC opportunity because what we do is we stun the target and we discord fan the hammer on that target. And the discord changes, uh, or the fan the hammer changes means it's uh, gonna be 330 damage times 30%, which three times 33, that's 99. That's putting you at 429 damage from just your fan the hammer alone not including the Brigida Shield Bash damage or simply swinging her flail, uh, not including any headshots from your Zenyatta or body shots, not including anything your Diva or Winston are doing, not including anything your Lucio's doing. So you have <coughs> excuse me, six targets, four targets, five targets, it doesn't matter. Um, 
shooting onto it, the additional damage from the flash fan, it's going to be a dead target almost instantaneously. I have seen, um, it is not uncommon to see a diva, you know, 200 armor, 600 HP, immediately demect from full health to zero health from the execution of this combo. And that's the play, right? So you force the person onto the point and you kill the person on point. And once you kill the person on point, you can be more flexible pushing your advantage, okay? Um, I don't think a whole lot more needs to be said about that. I think Temporal does a better job of explaining that and the intricacies are something that you as a team are just gonna figure out. Okay, let's go into our poke because poking with Protect the McCree is important because especially with the GOATS meta that's out and about, you have to be a lot smarter with how, when, where you poke, okay? So the aspects of our poke are simple. They are our McCree and our Zenyatta, and that's pretty much it, okay? Um, you can obviously argue that D.Va has some form of poke, that Lucio has some form of poke, and you, that was, you would be right, but <coughs> the majority of the damage is gonna be coming from these two sources, and whenever you can, your Zenyatta wants to be syncing up his Discord with whoever your McCree is shooting. It's not come hugely necessary, but in terms of like min-maxing, uh, especially in a competitive team environment, you want to be synchronizing your Discord and your McCree focus targets. Now, when you're playing a poke comp, um, there's usually two different compositions that you'll be playing for the poke side of the spectrum against. Do you remember the spectrum? Again, are you playing for the play? Are you playing for the poke? When you're playing for poke, it's usually up against two different compositions. Some form of dive uh, and some form of goats, or we'll just say tanks, okay? So quad tank, it doesn't really matter. The triple tank doesn't really matter. You're playing up against dive. Now you're probably thinking, well, what do you mean dive? What, what? Doubles, what about double sniper dive? You just said double sniper dive counters it. Well, when I mean dive, I mean more of the DPS lineup and less of the tank lineup. Obviously, Winston Diva are very prevalent, and just the presence of Winston Diva doesn't immediately mean that you need to be playing for poke, right? If it's Winston Diva on Zo Widow, then you don't want to be playing for poke, right? So it's more I'm talking more about the DPS with dive and the uh, presence of more than two tanks when I re refer to tanks. So when we talk about tanks, um, we'll talk about tanks first. So with tanks, it's understanding, like we said earlier, that the more resources they have going into the fight, the worse off it's going to go for me. So the more HP, the more Matrix, the 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 fire, the the, the more shield HP that uh, Reinhardt has, the more bubbles that uh, uh, that uh, the Zarya has. Um, the if a Hog has hook, well, if Hog has vape, I guess hook wouldn't really be relevant. Um, <coughs> these are all resources that are going to make our job difficult to execute a play and endanger our life, right? If they do if we do try and immediately force a play onto them. So we need to try and soften them up at range. Damage, 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 damage. So once point pressure is finally forced, um, we play this a certain way. We play it by continuing to milk the target. Well, we have to make two decisions actually. So let's pause this really quick. Once we, if we accomplish our poke goal. So if we poke, if we poke successfully, then we have to make a decision here. One, we poke more. So in other words, if they're on a payload map, we let them push the payload a little bit more and maybe go for an elimination before we contest, or we contest. Uh, I don't know why it changed size. I must have actually hit the scroll wheel. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, why would we go for the play? Why would we contest? You just said we're playing for poke. Yeah, we play for poke up into a certain point. For example, if the Diva's at 200 health, the Reinhardt's got no shield health, uh, the Zarya has no bubbles, the Ana just used Nade, you could probably turn your focus from playing from poke to playing for the play, playing for the combo, because they no longer have resources to stop you from doing that effectively. So then you can all in the Reinhardt and he dies because he doesn't have nade, he's got no shield to block any more damage. Uh, the Zarya can't bubble him. The Diva's got no matrix to eat it. So you can you can change how you play it depending on how many resources you have. <coughs> or you can just continue to poke, 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 poke until something dies. Because something if they if you have poke and the enemy doesn't have poke and they don't play it correctly, eventually something's going to die. Eventually they're going to run out of shield. They're going to you're going to McCree's going to hit two headshots. The Discord's going to happen on the right target at the right time, and something's going to die. Now, you never want to wait too long to poke. 
and you never want to contest too early. Your team is going to have to find a balance, not only on the composition that you're facing up against, but also just on how the fight's going, right? Maybe your McCree pops off and puts a lot of damage, so you can contest earlier than you normally had to. Or maybe your McCree is having a hard time hitting shots, and so you kind of have to let the payload go a little bit longer. Maybe you have to let them get a tick on the point before you drop on. Um, so you guys kind of have to make that judgment calls. And if you're a coach for a team, that's something that you want to be looking for in the VOD and saying, how are we doing it making these judgment calls, right, against tank compositions now let's keep going because that's not the only time you play for poke because if you're playing against dive dps i'm going to clarify that with this you play for poke for a different reason so dive wants to stage and staging is basically the aspect of i want to get as close to the target as possible without taking any damage the winston wants to creep behind tracer's coming from here genji's wall climbing and then they all whoosh all in one target right now Protect the McCree is gifted with a lot of tools to be anti-dive, right? Whether it's the Flashbang, the Shield Bash, the Lucio Boop, uh, the Inspire healing, having a Winston and Diva of your own is appealing enough, right? So if a dive is staged on you, it's often that it's likely that you'll be fine. But if you can even prevent the staging aspect of it, so no, not today, dive, then that's going to make things incredibly different. Now, how do you stop staging, right? Well, you can position yourself so you can see or basically deny flanks. But the easiest way to do it is just to say, if I can't shoot something on the enemy dive team, then we need to move our position. So let's put it this way. If Winston and D.Va are staging, Genji's staging, Tracer's staging, Sombra's staging, um, what, other, what else would it be? Maybe even a pharmacy. A pharmacy and a Tracer looking to cut coordinate on you guys, right? You want to make it so that the enemy team takes a large amount of damage before they're able to dive or so much damage that they don't they aren't even able to dive at all right <clears throat> or you're able to farm up ults before they farm up ults so for tanks you wanted to put pressure before you needed to execute the play so that they couldn't brawl with you or when they did brawl with you they're going to be weaker when dive it's a similar concept but instead of worrying about the brawl you're worried about the all on one so when that winston comes onto you he we want to make sure that you forced his bubble by putting in a lot of damage before he jumped you want to make sure that the diva can't matrix um you know your uh, mccree's ability to demech her by farming up as much of her matrix before the fight by shooting her in the face put a shot towards genji so he has to use his deflect before he dives onto you put a shot towards tracer so that she has to recall before diving on top of you uh and if you can't poke ultimately then that's something that you need to be looking at in terms of adjusting your positioning so that you can poke that or and that you are denying these staging opportunities so this conversation is a lot more complex than against the tank compositions it's a lot less straightforward um but ultimately the goal is still the same to poke to poke to poke to poke and then when they contest you you have the resource advantage you have the hp advantage you have the cooldown advantage and remember Protect McCree is incredibly strong against Dive. So even if they do stage properly on equally skilled teams, Protect the McCree beats Dive. That's just how it works, especially with the state of Fan the Hammer, especially with the state of Flashbang, especially with the state even after the changes to um, Shield Bash. Uh, it is extremely strong. So your Zinyata, as long as your Zinyata is alive, as long as your McCree is alive, you're going to be fine. And you have a lot of resources to protect your team. Now, we've talked about playing for Poke about playing for play but what about or excuse me playing for poke against dive and tanks but what about playing for the play okay so i know that's kind of a clunky way of staying it so i just like having the p's in there it's, it's fun um so the play is point right remember that based off of point and avoiding point and avoid poke right so you would to go for the combo, the burst combo on an accessible target threatening your point, or really any accessible target, based off of the fact that you would be inferior in poke compositions. So you need to think about the number of damage heroes, right? And which one of those heroes would do well against a McCree composition. Hanzo, a lot of damage, better range than McCree, right? More shield break than McCree, big threat to your tanks okay <clears throat> big threat to your backline uh widowmaker let's actually be drawing these names hanzo <coughs> widowmaker one shot potential 
infinite range, good vision, can take angles that are can make it difficult to deal with. Um, Ash and their new thing, you know, you've got your 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 Lucio and your Brig and your Zenyatta all clumped in the back line. Ash lands a big dynamite, maybe lands some shots. Like her range is much better, her damage output is much better. Um, and this is going to come as a surprise to some of you guys, but Pharmacy is also an aspect of a strong poke composition. Now, Pharmacy by herself, uh, so Farah and Mercy by themselves are not countered or not don't counter protect the McCree. In fact, protect the counters them, right? But what if Pharmacy is paired up with a Widowmaker, right? Now, all of a sudden, you've got two high damage threats that are uh, either supported or inaccessible for the most part. So now you're definitely in trouble, right? Because, yeah, your McCree kind of counters. McCree's and Yadda's pretty well against Farah, but not when you're having to look too many different days at once. So Pharmacy is high damage that, yes, on paper might counter, uh, or might be countered by the Protect the McCree, but it is something that we have to consider when considering total damage output. What if somebody was running a cheesy Bastion comp? <clears throat> right? I mean, can you really poke out a Bastion? Is that how it's going to work? I mean, maybe unless, maybe if you get enough shield damage, but like, you're running a Lucio. What's Lucio going to do up against an Arista shield, right? So you have, these are, and this is not all of them, but basically all the ones that you're looking for that you can't play for poke. Maybe you could throw a junk right in there to an extent as well. So, um, so these are all really, really high damage comp heroes that when the enemy team has them, you have to consider whether, A, do we really have more damage at range than they do? Because that's fundamentally the decision. Do I do more damage at range or do they do more damage at range? What's the threat of me put, like, do they force more of our cooldowns and are more of a threat of killing us? Or are we force more of their cooldowns and more of a threat of killing them? And remember, it's a specter, okay? It's like, it's on different sides of the place. So it's maybe they're playing a pharmacy, uh, pharmacy Sombra, right? So they're pretty good in poke um but not as good as you guys are so you definitely would play for poke especially considering your heroes kind of counter there's the brig the diva can deal with the um or the brig and the diva can deal well mostly the brig would deal with the sombra and then your um diva can spy check for the sombra and then deal with the far so that might be not completely playing for poke but playing for a smarter poke or maybe they're playing Cyber Dive. That's another one. Genji Sombra. A team, uh, you counter their hard dives, but once ults are online, they'll farm for ults, and then once their ults are online, you might have a hard time beating them. So understanding that different... Oh, or here's another one I ran into once. Goat's Widowmaker. What do you do there? How do you, how do you play up against that, right? You have a really, really strong poke, but also a tank-heavy comp? How do you beat that? How do you play up against that? And we're gonna try and explain some of the some of the things that you can think about when playing up against those type of compositions. So ultimately, playing for uh, play means going. I have inferior uh, damage, so I'm going to play for objective. And I'm just gonna leave that. I know that's not really a very clear statement, but I'm gonna play for the objective. We'll stick a V in there. Play for the objective. And that means uh, avoiding poke as much as possible, hiding, you know, sitting tight, knowing where the damage resources are, using your matrix wisely. And then when you have a, the team contests you, you contest the team. Like when you decide it's okay and ready to go, you all in. You execute a target. You close the space between you and the enemy team, and you find a target and you kill it. And it doesn't always have to be one target. You just have to find a way to close space and only take the fight when that long poke spam damage is not as much of a factor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to spend more time giving you some real life examples of this. Now, I cannot play the comms for this because this is for my ex team um, from team I used to coach and this is some old VODs of them and I'm not going to expose the comms that were used in that VOD but we're going to show you both examples of playing for poke and playing for the play and different compositions and how we played it if we played it correctly um make sure I've got my scene correct we good yes we're good okay so we are uh, Team Blue here, and we're running the standard Protect the McCree composition. Now, you're going to notice something. Our friend Carpe, obviously not the real Carpe, makes a switch from Widowmaker to Goats. This is now Floats, Winston Goats. Now, Winston Goats does not do much damage at range, right? They are inferior significantly in poke. 
but they have very strong brawl. Winston jumps you, the whole team speeds on top of you, and we're, we're dead, right? The Winston's going to kill us, right? So we right now should be thinking about, hey, what is the most damage that we can do right now before they get on top of us? We need to be putting out damage now. We need to choose a position to put out damage now. We need to anticipate their pathing and put out damage now. Now you can see we're real split right now. You see this right here? <coughs> Brigida's down here, Zenyatta's down here. I don't know who this is. Is this our, I think this is our, yeah, our McCree's over here. This isn't good. So we want to be stacked in tight. And, and the reason for that is, is against poke composition, or uh, 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 brawl compositions, compositions that we want to execute poke on, we need our Lucio to be able to speed uno, dos, tres, far away and keep them at range. Our dive tanks can move around willy-nilly. They don't really have, they can jump away from them. They're not concerned. They're not gonna be even the focus for this. But if our Lusu isn't with our one, two, three targets, then those targets are at risk of being sped on, jumped on, and dying. So we need that speed boost on them. Not to mention the fact that both of these targets benefit uh, our, these two with their healing, which is AOE, their area of effect. So we're playing low ground here. I think we're in, we're no we're going, rotating the high ground. Now right here, what do we what should we be recognizing? So our tanks can test their tanks. We're gonna ignore the tank play for the most part right now. Um, but we need to recognize that they're looking to speed on us. So we should not really be going after them right now. We should be keeping our distance. And the second that they commit to us, we should actually be kiting them backwards and keeping them at range, consistently damaging them. So our proximity here is a little bit concerning. Do you see what's happening here with this player? We've got one player here, player here, player here. So we're split and we're not utilizing our speed boost. So any target that gets on top of us could be a real threat. Now we're stacked a little bit better and we're putting out damage. We force a primal. And this Winston should die. But unfortunately, are we, do we kill the Winston here? Nope, so we're too slow in peeling the Winston. Now let's find out, why does, why does our Awesome Bash, our Zenyatta die? <clears throat> so Awesome Bash, our Zenyatta dies because, I don't know if it was from the Lucio boop. Yes, so the, the Winston boop, excuse me, knocked our Lucio this direction and our Zenyatta is over here. So now our Zenyatta is not able to benefit from the CC and the healing that our Lucio provides and gets isolated and picked. So partially due to our positioning error, partially due to a good play from their Winston to split our backline. So we were unable to play for poke. We allowed their Winston to get onto our backline without taking enough damage. Even with Primal, we'll melt through Primal. We'll absolutely melt through Primal, especially because he does not have access to shield. So right now, We've traded one for one. We no longer have our Discord. They no longer have their Lucio. So we still play for Pope here. They have less healing. We have less damage, but we still have a significant damage uh, advantage. So we're not dropping right now. Payload is contested. That's good enough for us. We're not concerned uh, about winning this fight just yet. And you're going to notice that we're all of a sudden at an HP advantage. That Zenyatta is almost dead. And now he has to leave the fight. So we lost our D.Va, unfortunately, which is really not a huge deal. Again, though, do we exit? Yeah, so now we decide to drop, and this is an error. You should only, remember, you should only be executing a play, going from poke to play, when you have, a, when you have an obvious advantage, right? Do you see an obvious advantage right now? Is this D.Va an obvious target that we could kill? Is she very low on Matrix? I don't know. But is she low on HP? Certainly not. Certainly not. And instead of us staying high ground and managing to get the D.Va low and then executing our play, once we have an advantage, we force the play. Not only is that bad because it kills our Brigida, but our McCree and Lucio don't follow our Brigida on the play. And so we're split, isolated, and we're probably going to lose this fight. So we incorrectly decided that it was time to play for uh, to execute the play instead of continuing to play for poke. So... <coughs> Now you see why it's so important to understand what your win conditions versus the composition are and understanding when you have an advantage that you can push. 
we were not able to play for poke near enough we did not push out and put out near enough damage on the right targets and instead we forced objective pressure way too soon and we ended up losing the fight because of it okay now we're going to move on to a completely different situation the complete opposite situation which would be uh when we're playing for uh the play okay so we're going to pull up another map okay so even just a quick glance at this composition remember what we talked about with poke versus play Pharmacy, we do pretty well against by itself. A hard-pocketed Mercy, especially when you're playing with a good Phara, can be a little bit tricky to play around because even if you land a shot, the Phara positions herself in a way that it's almost impossible once you land that first big shot to be able to follow up on it. She pulls behind the corner, she uses her conch, she uses her natural uh, the map geometry to her advantage. So Pharmacy can be difficult to play against, um, even with Protect the McCree, especially when you have a Widowmaker. So now we have gone from saying, oh, we're going to play for poke, we're going to play for poke, to <clears throat> the second we identify that we are at an inferior poke, we need to be playing for point. Now, the reason I selected this map is not just because it demonstrated uh, an opportunity where my team uh, play, should be playing for play against this or playing for point, but because this map is an excellent uh, opportunity to showcase the strength of rotations. Now, this is, um, it is Nepal Sanctum. Sanctum. I always get those two mixed up. And so it offers an excellent opportunity through these tunnels, through this little drop ground or whatever it's called, horseshoe right here. Okay? Because you can hide down here or even in this room right here, down here or in this room, and you hide until the point unlocks. You can contest the point underneath by sticking your Winston toe out here and, you know, bubbling. And then cycle that with your D.Va, mashing down her matrix back and forth until you cap the point. And the enemy team <coughs> is going to be forced to deal with you. Forced to deal with you. <coughs> and when they're forced to deal with you, the J J Winston jumps, the D.Va jumps, you kill them. You speed on them with your speed boost. You go right on top of them. I don't know why I put an L there, but <laughs> and you speed on top of that tank and you delete them before that Widow, before the Farah is able to put out enough damage. So you just avoid damage, avoid, 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 assassinate quickly and decisively. So we're playing this correctly. I think we scout that they have a Widow. This is why it's incredibly important to be able to scout what they're doing. Now that is the optimal play. This is an old video. This team uh, that I coached made significant improvements in her scouting and rotations. So. I don't remember what our play was here. Right now, we need to be deciding on forcing point pressure. We're taking a lot of damage. This is where that pharmacy really hurts from this range. Just shooting a rocket into this clump, especially when you're running three off supports, right? Uh, that don't put out a lot of healing. That could put us at a serious HP disadvantage. You can already see we've taken around 400 damage already from the Farah. So this is an incorrect play. And you can probably see why. We're forcing point pressure before the point unlocks, so it's meaningless point pressure. Uh, and we're doing so in a way that exposes us to not only the high damage of the Farah, but the high damage of the Widow. Uh, and unless we see a massive opportunity to kill something, if the enemy makes a mistake, this should not be what we're doing. So you could look at our look at our look at our Winston here. So our Winston is forced to use bubble and takes this huge chunk of damage because of a wrong decision. We're still forcing point pressure. Uh, and this is a this is we, we decide to rotate this way instead of just rotating this way. I'm not really sure why. Um yeah, that was extremely unfortunate. So <coughs> we do make the right decision eventually but unfortunately you can look at the ult charge here we're already at a significant ult charge disadvantage and this is really bad here um we don't want that we don't want them to have sites we don't want them to have barrage and really we don't want to have to expend all of our resources just to heal up our tanks before the fights even started so this is this is why mental errors are so crucial and uh, and be determining what a good and a bad team is uh and so we play we hide we're getting healed up a little bit now uh, and uh, we go out and we assassinate, I believe. No, nope. do we? No, this is, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So they're capping the point. Uh, Doom Fisted takes a lot of damage before he's able to bubble and just dies. So the HP disadvantage that we got ourselves at from the very start killed us. So we make a mistake and uh, it, it just instantly kills us. So also, this is not good. Um, 
We'll talk more about this later, but that should never be your first target choice as a McCree. That's it. You're at a disadvantage in that duel, so you're not likely to win it. So right now, what we need to be doing is, even though we're at a disadvantage here, um, we can, as long as we play quickly, we can still win this. We should still be, we should be all inning one of these tanks right now. And right now we've got a McCree that's rotating, a Zenyatta that's rotating, uh, a Diva that seems unsure about what she wants to do. We should be all inning a target. And even if it, it's the Diva, go on to the Diva, just all in the Diva, all in the Diva. All in the Winston, all in the Winston. And, and, and we do get the Winston, okay. So we have to be quick because this is an uncontested widow, especially now that she's being res during this entire time. So we have to be quick. We have to be decisive. Unfortunately, because we made bad decisions at the very beginning, uh, we, you know, we're, we've, we've already lost the fight. So um, they do have point control. We managed to get our tank back safely. This is very greedy from them, and we should punish this. Extremely greedy from their main tank. Surprised he survived. We trance as well. Okay, we do end up killing him. He doesn't recognize our win condition, and we punish him for that. And you just see like how much power we have. Now, this is something very important. Um, how much power we have on point. Now, this is going to be a smooth transition into our next section, okay? So watch what our main tank does, Doomfisted. Doomfisted sees their Widowmaker right here. Um, so you can't see him. He's off on the other side of the screen, okay? So this direction. And he all ins that Widowmaker. Because when you're playing up against poke compositions, your tanks have different roles. So let's 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 pause really quick. Okay. We are we're back. I'm gonna go over our next section. So now we're gonna talk about the individual roles for each hero. So we talked about Winston and what something important that Winston did. So we'll draw Winston here. Winston's role is to deal with threats. Deal with threats. Now in a tank composition, when you're playing up against a tank composition, when you're going for poke, Winston's really just there to contest points. So he is either dealing with threats or contesting point. Um, so we'll talk, we're going to do this a little bit backwards. So dealing with threats um, is our first thing, but let's talk about um, tank composition contesting point. Basically, Winston's job when you're playing up against tank compositions is just to buy time on the point, on the payload, um, while your increased damage, while your damage superiority is basically winning, right? So your Zenyatta's popping off, your McCree's popping off. Winston's just there to kind of slow down the progress they're making before we get enough advantage to be able to push them uh, with, our, uh, with our superior damage, right? So um, just contest payload, contest point, try and avoid using jump if you can, so you can use jump to escape. And ultimately, actually Diva falls into this category as well. Okay, so ultimately Winston and Diva are both there to contest the point slash payload as much as they can, kind of cycling their aggression. Winston drops, uses bubbles, she just zaps, 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 and jumps out. Diva drops, uses all her matrix or as much as she can, and then flies back out again. And you're just there to just buy time, right? But then there's the other aspect of things, and that's with when you're running against compositions where the poke of the enemy team is higher than yours, you're dealing with threats or zoning. So zoning. Okay. Now, you have to think here. Does your backline really need a shield if you can chase the Widowmaker across the map? You have a Brigida already. You have a Zen and Lucio, right? They don't need peeling. They've got plenty of peeling on their own. They need you to deal with things that they can't reach, right? Whether it's a Widow, whether it's a Hanzo, whether it's an Ash. Winston's job primarily is to wait when playing against when playing for the play is to wait until the enemy team forces point pressure your team executes the play on whatever is forcing point pressure and at the same time you're dealing with ranged threats using your bubble and your jump now it's not just threats that you're trying to kill you don't have to kill those threats to, as winston you simply have to make sure they're not hurting your team while your team is pushing their advantage right you can trade one for one right you don't have to kill the widowmaker just make sure she's busy you don't have to kill the hanzo just make sure he's busy in addition this can also be applied with compositions 
like think of it uh, 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 like a pharmacy on a McCree, right? So you're playing protect McCree against a pharmacy on a McCree. You can't reliably dive and kill an on a McCree, can you? Heck no, you're going to die instantly. But what you can do is while your team is executing their Winston or maybe their Diva or maybe speeding into a sight line where they can kill the Farah quickly, you can jump bubble early and keep the McCree and Ana busy. Don't let them heal. Don't let the Ana heal her tank. Don't let the McCree be shooting your McCree or your Diva uh, or your backline. Uh, uh, keep them busy and then survive. So ultimately, your job of dealing with threats and zoning is just to survive as long as you can and to minimize those ranged, poke, uh, healing, high, high, uh, high uh, value threats and deal with them. You don't have to kill them, just deal with them. Okay, and then for D.Va, so D.Va does the same thing, but just in a different way. D.Va can't really pursue threats as much, but she can make the decision in one of two ways. D.Va can A deal with damage or B assist Winston so let's talk about the two different scenarios of that um, I don't know why I drew a little W there okay Winston we're doing all caps boys and girls okay assist winston or deal with damage dealing with damage would be your team is playing this composition and 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 you're you're going in aggressively on the reinhardt but they've got a hans who is pumping stormbow into you guys and so your job as divas to go where's the damage where's the damage and just max out the damage your team doesn't need your help with the damage as much as in with you doing the damage they need you to deal with the enemy damage and mitigate that as much uh, another huge uh matchup that you need to be looking for is diva is Team executes a play, you need to be dealing with the Farah Mercy. So you need to be, eat the Farah Rockets. Make sure Farah is not hurting your team at all while your team is busy. If that's using Matrix, if that's using Boosters, if that's shooting the Farah and zoning her out and knocking her back and taking a lot of damage yourself, fine, fine. But you don't let that Pharmacy contribute onto the back line. Now, what D.Va can deal with is a little bit more limited with Winston. You can't really chase a Widow or an Ash or even a Hanzo across the map. That's not really your job. Uh, but you can assist Winston. Now, you probably remember me saying earlier about how you jump your Winston onto their Ana McCree if, in that sort of situation to isolate those threats. But sometimes you have to look at it and go, my Winston is going to need a lot of help dealing with those threats. If Winston is usually diving more than one person, he's going to need some help. Uh, if it's a double sniper, uh, if it's a, you know, maybe he's jumping into a back an Ana and Zenyatta back line. Uh, maybe he's jumping a uh, Ana Zenyatta McCree back line. I don't know. But he's going to need more help than just himself going in to be able to zone out. Otherwise, he's just going to instantly die. So in those instances, when you go, well, there's not a really lot of high damage affecting my team right now. It's just my Winston dealing with that. Instead of me deal trying to d add additional damage when my team doesn't need it, I'm going to help my Winston zone out and survive longer while my four-man strong backline crushes everything else. Um, and so you kind of have to make that judgment call. Uh, I'm not going to get more in-depth than that. I think that's something that you'll have to learn with experience. Um, but uh, that's definitely the introduction of what you're supposed to be doing with D.Va with this composition. You deal with the biggest damage threats and you assist your Winston with those threats if necessary. If not, because sometimes if the enemy team is running Pharmacy uh, Widow, usually it'll be your Winston dealing with a winston or the widow and you're dealing with a pharmacy so sometimes you split sometimes you're together it's situational we're going to move on next to our uh, zenyatta zenyatta's jobs are simple discord match discord let's we'll just say discord for mccree and stack okay so <coughs> the discord for mccree is Pretty obvious. Um, stacking is like the concept, especially against dive compositions or compositions that are going to aggro onto you very quickly. Uh, you have your Inspire, you have your Shield Bash, you have your Whip Shot, you have your Boop, you have your Lucio Heals, you have your Lucio Amp, you have your Flashbang, you have your Fan, you have your Diva if she peels for you. But none of those resources are available to you if you're not playing close enough. So Zenyatta in this composition, you're not playing Zenyatta way in the back like you do with the Zen Mercy, trying to stay away from the Winston Diva. No, you're staying a stacked of type. You are a damage dealer. You could just as you could argue that this could be should be called a protect the Zenyatta composition. Um, so 
as a Zenyatta who's played in this composition before, it's a lot of fun. You get to play extremely aggro, uh, and it is the best way to play Zenyatta. As long as you're with your Lucio and Brig, then you're doing your job. Um, moving on next, let's uh, talk about our Lucio. Lucio's jobs is specifically peeling. So peeling against die. So we'll, we'll say peeling against play uh, uh, poke situations. So if you're playing for poke, your job with peeling is to boop against dive. So say boop and amp against dive, and to use your speed boost to kite. Okay, so peeling against poke can mean kiting or boop slash amping. So basically, if the enemy team is running a full dive on you, their Sombra Genji or Tracer or whatever is jumping on you, you need to have your amp on points. You need to have your boops on point. <coughs> and against tank compositions, you need to know, you need to be able to kite with speed, kind of keep yourself in that poke phase as long as possible. The other side of the spectrum is when you're playing for play. So executing your play would mean you need to have a communication, communicate, communicate, execute, speed. So when your team has a target that is contesting point, you're at this, as soon as you guys call what the target is, you go, 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 go. Everybody speeds into that target. You need amp speed. That's generally preferred. The faster, the better. And you assassinate that target as quickly as possible while you're Winston zoning the range damage, while your diva's dealing with the pharmacy or the Hanzo or assisting with the Winston. That's kind of what you're doing there. So your job as a Lucio is to not only stay in the stack, but be very decisive about understanding what the win condition is and using your speed. If you're playing for point pressure and assassinating point pressure and you're very indecisive and slow with your speed boosting onto the target of assassination, then you will die because the fights will take too long. Okay. <coughs> Simply put, that's kind of Lucio's job. Um, Brig. Brig is really the simplest job. Um, I'm not even going to bother writing it. I'm just going to state it. Brig, you peel for your back line. You save your E for tanks whenever possible. Um, and then you try and get your Inspire proc as soon as possible. You need to make sure that you're utilizing your Shield Bash properly and executed targets. Use it quickly. Uh, and don't whip shot the uh, targets away. Because uh, unless you're sure it's the combo that will burst them down, it will make it harder for your McCree, for your Zenyatta, for your Lucio, whoever else to finish off that target. It'll make it harder for you to finish it off as well. Because it'll put it outside your swing range. So, <coughs> Brig is all about... Saving your E for tanks whenever possible, uh, and making sure that you're landing your anti your, your anti dive abilities uh, when the enemy team is running dive. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's pretty much it for the brig. Um, we talked about uh, Winston and Diva, so the last one would be uh, cannot draw with a mouse to save my life. That's just McCree. So McCree, um, poke match Discord. So poke match Discord. We talked about this. So. Try and make sure that you're synchronizing what your Zenyatta uh, and uh, what you and your Zenyatta are shooting at. Um, it doesn't matter if it's tanks or backline. It just depends on opportunity. If you're playing up against a tank-heavy composition, usually you actually want to be going for tanks. Um, <clears throat> although it depends. Depends on opportunity. And then against dive, it's the same thing. Tanks, tanks, tanks. You have extreme damage against tanks, especially with headshots. Uh, and then making sure you're uh, hitting flash against dives. Uh, hitting flash and dives and in your executed play so especially with the shield bash changes if you're looking to execute a quick play burst combo on top of a reinhardt your flashbang is extremely important so if you need a flash over the rein shield if you need to get the rein to turn around for you to hit your flashbang whatever the case may be hitting flash plus fan very important fan's not as important against anti-dive uh, but when you're using it to execute your play to force point pressure extremely important um, so that's pretty much it with mccree um <clears throat> we'll talk about ult super quickly um, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna draw them. Uh, Winston, <clears throat> we'll we'll just go down the list. I'm just gonna put the put the letters. Winston, Madiva, McCree, Zenyatta, Lucio, Brigida. Okay, so Winston, you are uh, against tank compositions. Uh, you're using it against basically against compositions where you're forcing a play. Um, you're, you're, you're contesting point with it against tank compositions to allow your team to do more damage. Um, you are using it to allow you to zone Widowmakers and Hanzas better and for longer without dying yourself. Um, and against compositions where you have better poke, um, 
you're just using it in situations where you get low, where your team doesn't have a lot of uh, HP to give you, and you just use your your uh, primal in that situation. So, and and poke when you have the superior poke, you don't use it need to use it as much. Diva usually use it for remaking purposes or to allow you to contest point longer. It's kind of just the same as Winston in that aspect. Moving on to McCree, McCree against Dive. Um, uh, against Dive, you want to avoid using it. It puts you in uh, inability to use Flash or Fan. I'm not a big fan of using it in Dive. However, uh, or or executed play combinations because it locks you in place. Um, but against something like tank compositions, very, very, very good at shield break. Uh, in fact, my team has had a lot of success running Protect the McCree against Goats um, because once we farm up... Um, uh, high noon it's actually pretty easy especially against inexperienced reinhardts to bust their shield and basically taking away their advantage and we can force the fight of them they have no shield it's right off the bat so um zenyatta uh counter ults counter enemy ults whether it's graviton uh uh blade whatever the case if you don't have any ults to counter use it to sustain your tanks um, that's an, and that applies to Lucio as well. So think about counter ults, but also think about sustaining your tanks because you don't have a main healer in Moira on it or Mercy. Uh, so sometimes in situations where the fight your your tanks might die, you can use a support ult to sustain them just to win the fight, not necessarily to counter an enemy ult. With Brig with rally changes, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to impact this fight. Um, it will still mean that you want to use rally right at the start of the fight once the team is initiated to allow you guys to brawl longer and to be able to sustain up against anti-dive longer. You want to make sure that your Zenyatta gets the armor, even if it's only temporary nowadays, uh, because that 30 seconds of armor is crucial for the squishiest target in the group. Um, <coughs> okay, that's about it. <clears throat> I don't really have a whole lot more to add to this. Um, I think that this was pretty in-depth, um, at least super, like, this, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but like, we went over a lot of stuff <clears throat> with a little bit of weights. So we talked about a lot of matchups, a lot of win conditions, um, and a lot, without a lot of depth. But that's something that you can get the uh, general idea of how to play the composition and then go out and train it yourself. Um, a couple frequently asked questions about the Protect the Mercury composition. Why do you run Winston Diva <clears throat> um, over Reinhardt Zarya? I think once the diva is more uh, more flexible, you can go up against you like you'll you don't have the same zone out the enemy. Uh, it, it, like fundamentally, w the only time you'd ever run Reinhardt Zarya over Winston Diva, in my opinion, is in a mirror match where you're basically going, "Oh uh, hey, our Reinhardt is just going to hold shield, and we're going to poke you from behind the Reinhardt shield and basically win the poke war." But up against goats, Reinhardt Zarya is much worse. Um, because you do not have the same ability to contest the point safely and then jump out while your team milks the resources. Your Reinhardt, sorry, have no mobility. They just die. Um, against Dive, obviously Reinhardt, sorry, is just terrible against Dive. Uh, and against poke compositions like when, uh, Hanzo, uh, Widow, again, just terrible. Like no ability to contest the enemy snipers, no ability to peel, no ability to zone at all. Um, so I'm not a fan of the Reinhardt Zarya. It's not just it's not just bad in terms of map design. Like there's a lot of maps with high ground. It's not just about the high ground. It's about what they can actually contribute to your team's win condition. I don't think they do a very good job of doing that. Um, any other frequently asked questions? Um, is it going to be meta? I don't know. I think McCree is extremely strong hero right now. I think the uh, Fan the Hammer buff was unnecessary. Um, what changes to this composition are going to be coming in the future? That I can't anticipate. I've seen Ana run in this composition. I've seen Ana's in Lucio instead of a Brig. Um, I think as time goes on, it's going to be difficult for me, just just a coach, to try and predict exactly where the meta is going to go. But the core concept of protecting McCree um, is still going to be similar. Even if it's not so much about assassinating, even if it's playing more for poke, even if it's playing more patiently... Um, you, it, the, the concept of playing around your McCrees and Zenyatta's high damage and understanding when you need to play for poke and when you need to play for point and how those two things are different is still going to remain, even if it changes a little bit uh, fundamentally. So anyway, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this. hope it wasn't too long. I was trying to be as in-depth as possible, and I don't think I could really uh, give the amount of information that I did any quicker than I did. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, and uh, feel free to drop any questions you have below in the uh, comments. Spy the lot.